in particular, the second one with uh, Shota Komatsu, a fantastic uh, collaborator, and also some works in progress. So let me start with some uh, brief motivations. So for the Interpol Surpianos, it's perhaps the most well-studied uh, interacting couple field theory in recent years. And this is the case for several reasons. First of all, it shares many features of strongly coupled gauge theories in four dimensions. It also admits a variety of methods to study its dynamics, such as supersymmetric localization, integrability, and conformal bootstrap. Furthermore, thanks to the ADS safety correspondence, it bears close connection to quantum gravity IDS5 MS5. And indeed, in recent years, that there, are, there have been lots of progress made in determining basic observables in, in the interforced BMLs as a conformal field theory, namely the correlation functions of local operators. But the spectrum of observables in interforced BMLs is much richer than just the level of local correlators. In particular, it has defects of different code dimensions. These defects are interesting and important observables for several reasons. First of all, they're sensitive to global structures of the gauge theory, which are otherwise invisible to local correlation functions. The defect also gave rise to new structure constants for the fully extended operator algebra. And by exploring general constraints on this new structure constants, such as coming from classing and unitarity, we can uh, formulate refined consistent conditions on a fully extended CFP. Perhaps the most familiar kind of defects in for Mills are the Wilson loop defects, also known as some other type defects. But more general defects in the Intro Mills are of the disorder type, some of which was already introduced in Charles' talk, such as the interface defect. These disorder defects are generally harder to study beyond perturbation theory, but we will see how methods introduced in this talk will help us to handle these defects in general. Okay, so here is a general framework for a general program for studying defects in for Mills that one might envision. So first of all, we would like to have a classification of defects, or in other words, some universality class of defects, namely conformal defects in for Mills. To this end, there have been many partial classification results uh, based on supersymmetric examples, such as, such as the PPS Wilson to Hoof loops, the Gokov Witten surface operators, and Galata Witten domain walls. Many of these defects also has holographic descriptions inside type 3 string theory. And this opens the way to potentially uh, classify these defects by studying solutions to type 3 equation motion in the presence of suitable sources. Second on the list, we would like to develop some efficient tools to extract defect observables. So on one hand, we would like to have some analytic methods to determine defect structure constants. And we also want to combine this with uh, the, potentially with the bootstrap philosophy, namely to formulate consistent conditions on the defect observables and explore constraints from unitarity and crossing following these previous works. This bootstrap approach also gives potentially a bootstrap definition of uh, conformal defects and allows a potential classification by exploring these bootstrap conditions. And finally, one would like to study implications from these defects for the fully extended CFT. So there are many applications. Uh, I will just list a few here. The defects can generally be charged on the higher form symmetries. And as explained in Ebo's talk just now, these higher form symmetries can, uh, can, um, can give rise to non-trivial anomalies in the fully extended theory. And uh, these this, uh, this anomalies that uh, uh, when it involves these higher form symmetries can take incarnations on the defect world volume through some uh, particular couplings. We'll probably hear some, something along this line in Clay's talk. And finally, it will be an interesting question to understand what is the complete set of data to specify a fully extended CFT? So in some sense, this question will be related to classifying the kind of solution to the bootstrap conditions for defect observables. In this talk, I'll be modest and focus on the second point, that is to de develop some analytic methods to extract defect observables. To be more concrete, let me focus on the Intuor theory with UN or SUN gauge group. 
and parameterize general observables in introversion parameters that may involve defects as follows. So here is the rank N of the gauge group. And here G4 is the Yamil's coupling, which I have combined with N into the total top coupling for convenience. And the defect, uh, and this defect observables may, in general may preserve some, some or no supersymmetry and that they lie somewhere on this axis. Depending where the observable sits in this parameter space, different efficient methods would apply. So two specific methods I'll introduce in this talk are the localization method and durability method. The localization method, method applies when the defect observable of interest preserves a particular 116 PPS subalgebra of the full superconformal algebra. If that's the case, then I'll describe a, an emergent 2D 1D description that allow you to efficiently extract such defect observable. On the other facets of this parameter space, namely at large n, we can use interability uh, to study defect observables. Traditional interability approach start from this weak coupling limit that's based on the spin chain method. In this talk, I'll describe a bootstrap approach to integral boundary states that correspond to defects in the field theory. And this bootstrap pro uh, program allows us to e extract these defect observables, preserve no supersymmetry at finite coupling in the planar larger n limit. And many of these results can be compared to predictions from type 2b string theory by a programming analysis in type 2b on ADS 5.5, where we can trust the classical string theory description for large n and large to hold coupling. Applying these methods to the particular example, namely the one point function in the presence of interface defect, half PPS interface defect in for Shibriamios, we can determine this one point function explicitly on these facets. And of course, the answers match at common regime of validity. And they also agree with the type string theory proposal. So in the end, we show that uh, this D5 one point function is completely determined on the dark regions of this parameter space. Of course, one would like to go deeper into this parameter space to probe gen more general defect observables, but that would require some other methods, potentially by conformal bootstrap along this line. But due to the time limit, I will not talk more about, about this in this talk. So let me start by talking about this localization method, which uncovers the immersion 2D, 1D effective theory, which I'll call defect Yamil's theory, that is very useful to determine a uh, large class of 116 PPS defect observables in the introversion parameters theory. Before I give you some details of defect Yamil's theory, I would like to uh, review, briefly review, two important ingredients, two important previous works that led to the, pre uh, the present development. The first is thanks to this, uh, this authors here, where an emergent 2D subsector of the 4D superamules on R4 or S4 was discovered. The emergent 2D amyl theory is restricted to the zero instanton sector, 2D instanton. The gauge coupling of 2D amyls, G amyl squared, is related to the 4D gauge coupling as follows. The emergent Yamil's fields on this, uh, uh, in this 2D sector lives on a particular S2 of size R. And this emergent 2D gauge fields are a combination of the 4D gauge field restricted to the S2 and a combination that involves three out of the six scalar in the super Yamil's theory. The main, main evidence for this 4D 2D correspondence comes originally from studying 1 8 BPS, 1 8 BPS Wilson loops in the super Yamil's theory and realizing that the similarly complicated observables can be, can be reproduced by computing ordinary Wilson loop observables in the 2D Amiel's theory. And later, this picture was derived from a localization procedure, thanks to Pestum, by localizing the 4D super Amiel's theory IS4 with respect to a particular supercharge Q that, uh, that generates SU1 slash 1 subalgebra of the full superconformal algebra PSU2 comma 2 slash 4. This, uh, this uh, supercharged Q has a feature that it squares to a combination of a transverse rotation to the S2 inside S4, and also involves R symmetry rotation. This 4D 2D correspondence is very nice because it gives a rise to a way to determine interacting seemingly very complicated observable in the 4D super Amiel's theory by solvable methods in the 2D gauge theory, which is much simpler thanks to its quasi-topological nature. 
there's a very similar story uh, that was later developed in the context of 3D for superconform field theory on S3. There, thanks to the work of these people, it was discovered there's an emergent 1D topological quantum mechanics, or uh, 1D subsector described by the topological quantum mechanics on the grid S1 inside S3. The basic degree of freedom in this 1D topological quantum mechanics are some scalar fields, this Q and Q tilde. These are some antiperiodic scalars on S1, and, uh, and they, they, uh, they come from some twisted combination of hypermultiples uh, in the, in the three-dimensional theory. You can make this uh, picture more interesting by coupling the 3D hypermultiplets to, to some interacting vector multiplets. And by a non trivial RG flow, such a UV description flows to interacting uh, 3D superconform field theory in the IR. This corresponds to, on the 1D side, to upgrade from the topological quantum mechanics of free fields to some gauge topological quantum mechanics. And then once again, this picture can be derived from localization by. Uh, by taking uh, by by localizing respect to a supercharged Q Q3D that has a very simple uh, that generates a very similar algebra inside now the 3D superconform algebra OSB4/4. And once again, this this uh, 3D 1, 1D correspondence is very appealing because it gives a way to extract strongly coupled observables that may involve monopole operators, for example, and the vertex loops in the 3D for superconform field theory, and reduce that problem to some solvable mini bootstrap problem in the 1D operator algebra. And many of this, uh, uh, these things are explored in these papers and also many others. Uh, given the similarity between these two uh, supercharges, uh, there's a one natural question you can ask. Can we combine these two setups in the one setting? This is especially natural because the 3D superconform algebra OSP4 slash four naturally it's naturally the symmetry of a half PPS superconformal interface defect in the interpersonal preambles. And you can check, it's a simple exercise, that this is true. Namely, the 3D supercharge can be identified with the, uh, the 4D supercharge uh, Q that was used to identify the 2D subsector of 4D uh, superambules. Okay. And this very simple kinematic observation actually has uh, interesting consequences. So first of all, of course, it puts these two uh, setups, two previous setups in one setting, namely in for superamyls in the presence of half EPS interface defect. But by studying the Q cohomology uh, among general observables that involve arbitrary defects in for superamyls, it gives rise to a very rich zoo of observable in the Q cohomology. And by general principle, if you perform the localization of the superamyls theory, in the presence of these uh, defects, which preserve the supercharged Q, it will give rise to some 2D amyls theory now, but uh, it will be decorated by corresponding defect insertions. And I will call this uh, defect image 2D amyls theory the defect amyls theory. Just to give you a flavor of the, what the general 116 PPS observable looks like in this setup, uh, here is a picture where I have suppressed two directions out of the four direction in the super Amos theory. So one can have interface, so in the Q cohomology of the super Amos, uh, among the defect observables, one can have boundary defects or interface defect along equator S3. There can be surface operators, either transverse or longitudinal to the S2, where the 2D Amos lives. And also one can insert line operators of the Wilson loop type on the S2 of arbitrary contour as well as to, to hope the loops that on the circle that links with the S2. And there are also local operators you can insert on the S2 and as well as local operators on restricted to the defect vol volume. And there's a very dic a simple dictionary that translates between the 4D defect observables to defect observable in the 2D amuse theory. Some of the defect ob observables in 4D will modify the 2D amuse theory, such as boundary interface will correspond to some interface some boundary interface coupling on the equator S1 inside S2. And surface operator, if it's transverse to the S2, will give rise to some cold dimension two twist operators on S2. If it's longitudinal, it will correspond to Higgs in the gauge group of the 2D amuse theory to some Levy subgroup. Similarly, Wilson loops uh, in, the, in the 4D super amuse simply map to Wilson loops uh, in the 2D amuse theory. But to hope the loops are more interesting, it modifies the 2D amuse path integral by including unstable 2D instantons, which are absent in the, uh, in the, in the pair to the atmosphere that I introduced in the beginning. 
Local operators also has a simple explanation in the 2D description. It just corresponds to some field strength insertions. Due to the time limit of this talk, I'll be focusing on the case of the boundary interface defect, in the, possibly in the presence of some local operator insertions, just to illustrate uh, this machinery. So as I promised, uh, now let's, uh, let's move on to application, uh, to the case of a DeFi brain interface defect in the virtual cameras. This kind of interface defect was already talked about in Charlotte's talk, so I'll be brief on this. So this DeFi brain interface can be easily engineered in type 3 string theory by uh, the simplest kind will be a single DeFi brain intersecting with a stack of D3 brains. Because the D3 brains can end on a DeFi brain, so on either side of the DeFi brain located at x1 equals zero, we can have a different number of D3 brains. And there's also s dual picture, thanks to the s dual in type 2B string theory, where the DeFi brain is replaced by an S5 brain that extends in three other transverse directions. The two setups preserve the same superconformal symmetry. The description of the interface defect in the, in the, in the SuperAMUS Lagrangian is also very simple. Because there's a different number of D3 brains on two sides of the D5 brain, the interface defect interpolates between SuperAMUS theory of different rank, say between UN and UN plus K. And K parameterizes the type of this D5 brain interface. More specifically, the field configuration in the SuperAMUS in the presence of the D5 brain interface looks like follows. So let me split the six scalars of the SuperAMUS theory into two triplets, X and Y. Most of the fields in the SuperAMUS theory satisfy a continuity condition across the defect. This includes uh, the gauge fields and the Y scalars. Plus and minus means it is to the right or to the left of the defect. The dotted entries are unconstrained, but otherwise obey some standard regularity condition. On the other hand, the X scalars are allowed to develop a pole as we approach the interface from the right. And the pole takes a very special form, the simple pole in X1 as X1 approaches zero. The polar coefficient is a triplet of matrices which have to satisfy ICU2 competition relation to preserve the superconformal symmetry. And just up to a gate transformation, a UK gate transformation, you can put the, the, the say the third component of this uh, triplet of matrices in this, into this diagonal form. And this is what, what was normally referred to as the non-pole configuration. This non-pole configuration is of course very, very explicit, but it's kind of hard to use I mean, it's because it's like an intrinsic disorder type defect. It's hard to use if you want to do any computation beyond perturbation theory. But fortunately, there's a mirror description of the same interface defect, thanks to the work of Galton and Witten. As explained in this paper, there's an alternative 3 into 4 Lagrangian theory, a UV description, as some quiver gauge theory that flows to the same non-pole type uh, defect uh, in the IR. The quiver is a linear quiver that looks like follows with manifest 3D into 4 super, uh, supersymmetry. The, the, the nodes of the quiver are unitary gauge groups, and each edge corresponds to a bifundamental hypermultiplet. In particular, this quiver has an enhanced uh, uh, global symmetry in IR that's enhanced from uh, you, uh, the topological symmetry associated with each of these unitary nodes, and such that the total symmetry becomes the UN plus K times UN global symmetry. And this enhancement is crucial for coupling this uh, interface theory to the, to the dynamical fields in the, in the, in the bulk of the 4D SuperAMOs. And the coupling is very natural just by gauging the boundary modes of UN plus K SuperAMOs on one side and the boundary modes of the UN, UN SuperAMOs on the other side. And this gluing picture together defines the UV Lagrangian for the SuperAMOs theory on S4 in the presence of a, a D5 brain interface at the equator. And the construction is such that the guarant is guaranteed to preserve the supercharge Q, the particular supercharge Q that generates a subalgebra inside OSB4 slash 4 preserved by the interface and the full superconformal algebra PSU2 comma 2 slash 4. And once you have this Lagrangian and the desired supercharge, one can just run the localization. I will not, uh, I will just, uh, I will spare you the details and just present the results. After some algebra, what you can show is that the, the, there's an immersion 2D, 1D path integral uh, that captures all the uh, dynamics of uh, observable in the Q-cohomology in the superamuse. The path integral looks like follows. 
They involve some 2D gauge fields on the two hemispheres, A and A prime, and also some 1D emergent uh, degrees freedom on the equator. The 1D degrees freedom are, uh, the dynamics of 1D degrees freedom is captured by some complicated 1D action, and also couple, and also has a non-trivial couplings to the, to the gauge fields on the two hemispheres. The action of the 2D gauge fields uh, are just given by the usual Yamil's action in 2D. And with this 2D, 1D path integral in hand, we are ready to use it to compute general 116 PPS observables in the super Yamil's theory in the presence of the fiber interface, which is taken care of by this kind of coupling. So let me just explain, uh, apply this to the, to the most basic observable in the presence of a defibre interface, namely the defect one point function of a bulk operator in the, in the presence of this interface defect. This is the very basic observable uh, uh, in, in the presence of defect because for example, uh, general correlation functions of local operators in the presence of this interface can be obtained by taking, first taking a bulk OPE limit and expand into this uh, simple defect structure constants. There's a very strong constraint from conformal ordinancy on such one-point functions. First of all, the one-point function is zero unless the operator in you insert is a scalar. Furthermore, the, the position dependence of this uh, scalar one-point function is also completely fixed by the distance as perp between the insertion and the defect. So the physics is just contained in this coefficients which I've circled here. And this is the object we're gonna, we are after. So for simplicity, let me restrict ourselves uh, to the case where this operator is a half PPS operator uh, in, in towards the PMLs. And it carries, char carries a particular R charge J with respect to a U1 subgroup of the SO6 R symmetry, and it has dimension J thanks to the PPS condition. And it can be explicitly written in terms of some two of the six scalars inside super PMLs, a single trace operator. And following the general dictionary I introduced before, I sketched it before, this one-point function in the full, in the full super Amuse theory with this interface defect can be computed by some 2D, 1D path integral, where this insertion just translates to insertion of field strength in the 2D path integral. Okay. And the strategy to determine this observable is first to integrate out this 1D fields, Q and Q, Q tilde, and that gives rise to some potentially complicated 2D uh, effective theory. But by some standard 2D gauge theory techniques, you can massage this 2D path integral into a simple matrix model. So let me just show you the results. The one point function, or the one point function of the of a half PPS operator OJ in the presence of dimension J in the presence of this half PPS interface of D5 brain type, labeled by K, meaning that it interpolates between UN and UN plus K super Yamus theory, takes the form of a simple matrix model where the matrix degree freedom comes from an end and Hermitian matrix, and A are the eigenvalues. This data A is the familiar Vandermann determinant. And this insertion here in the square bracket corresponds to the insertion OJ in the expectation value. Namely, this Fs are uh, degree J polynomials, which is related to the Chebyshev polynomial, which come from uh, usual uh, Gram-Schmidt procedure. Of course, we also have the one point function uh, of just of the bare defect in the absence of any local operating insertion and takes a very simple form. And you can obtain a normalized one point function of the OJ operator by taking the ratio. We can be more explicit in the larger limit where we can solve the matrix model using a subtle point approximation in the strict large limit. Uh, the answer looks uh, very simple. It receives a contribution from some integral and from a sum. Uh, the integral part uh, takes uh, slightly different forms depending on whether K, which labels the D5 interface, is uh, odd or even. Here, G is just the square root, is related to the square root of the Tohoff coupling. And there, there's also an interesting sum contribution, which has an interesting structure. It's a uh, sum of uh, over K entries. And what's more interesting is that, uh, I mean, this, this sum will have an interpretation from later, from, from later part of the talk from the integrability side. But all, moreover, it's the appearance of some uh, Joukowsky variable excess, which is related to, to the subscript as follows. It depends on the gauge coupling. And the Joukowsky uh, variables uh, arises naturally in the interoperability literature. And this is already some hint for potential interoperability of this D5 brain interface, which we'll explore later in this talk. And with this very explicit expressions in hand, 
we can do some easy checks. For example, if you, uh, so these are expressions that are exact in the, you know, uh, lambda, but in, otherwise in the large limit. You can, you can expand the expression in the large lambda limit and compare with type 2b string theory uh, predictions. So in that context, the computation uh, boils down to some probe d brain analysis on ADS4 times S2 with k units of world volume flux threading into S2. And the one-point function can be extracted by uh, studying world volume couplings on the d brain uh, world volume action by, uh, by couple, uh, I mean, being careful about couplings to closed string KK modes. And of course, one can do a small lambda expansion as well and check with perturbation theory. And this, uh, this checks works out nicely. Let's now move on to the second topic that is a bootstrap approach to integral boundary states that correspond to interface defects in first preambles. Before I talk about this, 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 uh, this integral, sorry, this boundary approach to integral boundary states, let me just briefly review this more traditional approach using integrability to study defect observables. And this, that is based on the, the integral spring chain language. The setup of the integral spring chain starts with realizing that the single trace operators uh, are related to a spin chain. So for simplest, they all restrict ourselves to the, uh, the so-called SU2 sector, where the single trace operator are built out of two complex scalars in the superamnios theory, Z and Y. And the ground state of the spin chain correspond to the single trace operator with just Z insertions. And the Y insertions correspond to the so-called magnons, which can be thought of as excitations on the spin chain. In this context, the defect can be represented by a matrix, particular matrix product state, as was talked about in Charlotte's talk. This, look, uh, this uh, single trace operator, on the other hand, corresponds to a, a beta eigenstates. And they're labeled by repetities, UM of the magnons, which keep, essentially keep track of the Y insertions. And one point functions simply come from the overlap in the spin chain. But this method, unfortunately, is limited to weak coupling, because in the spin chain description, Y implicitly assume that there's a nearest neighbor next to nearest neighbor couplings. And such restriction is not sensible if you want to consider finite coupling. So the goal be to overcome this, uh, these limitations, we upgrade from integrable string chain to integrable quantum field theory. Where does this integrable quantum field theory arise? It arises naturally on the world sheet of the type B string theory on ADS5, 10 to 5. More specifically, the D5 brain interface defect in the large and limit will naturally correspond to a boundary state on the world sheet of the type 2b string theory on ADS5 times 5. The integral field theory that I was talking about would arise when, we, when you take the green Schwartz string and in the light cone limit, where the effective theory is described by, on the world sheet is described by eight massive fermions and eight massive bosons. The single trace operators in that context is a, a correspond to a closed string state on the world sheet. And the one-point function are just computed by some overlap between the, this boundary state and this closed string state. A natural question that one may ask is that in this integrable field theory, is this boundary state also integrable? Indeed, there are some evidences from the weak coupling analysis thanks to the spin chain method. For example, the overlap between these uh, two states computed from the spin chain method, it's only now vanishing if the rapidities pair up. So the rapid rapidities should be interpreted as uh, so the magnets should be interpreted as particles on this, uh, in this integral field theory on the world sheet, and the rapidities are related to the momentum of these particles. The fact that the rapidity uh, have to pair up for a non-trivial overlap means that there's essentially no particle production in this reflection process if you rotate the, this uh, diagram by 90 degrees more precisely. And it's also a finer uh, structure of this uh, observable computed from the spin chain method, namely all, always involve a ratio of Gaudian determinants which basically computes, uh, computes norm of this uh, beta eigenstates. And as argued in this paper, these are very strong evidence for this, uh, this boundary state to be integrable. Okay, so given that it's an uh, it's a integrable boundary state, we can apply this bootstrap philosophy to bootstrap such an integrable boundary state. This bootstrap philosophy is not new. It was first uh, introduced, uh, I guess, uh, almost 30 years ago by Gosho and Zamolodikov, and more recently explored in this uh, uh, very nice paper. In particular, uh, integrability implies that the general overlaps uh, between this boundary state and the closed string state will factorize into two particle overlaps. 
And one can explore symmetry constraints on these two particle overlaps. Here is the sum SU2 uh, slash one subalgebra squared uh, inside the more familiar SU2 slash two squared algebra preserved by two point functions uh, that's familiar in the literature, uh, integrability literature. And then we, we would like to explore consistent conditions, further consistent conditions on these two particle overlaps. Say so coming from boundary young baxter equation, which basically says that uh, whenever two particles cross, you have to pay a price by the bulk 2 to 2 s matrix. And there's also a boundary unitarity constraint, which is most easy to understand if you rotate the diagram by 90 degrees. You're supposed to sum over these intermediate particles. And it's just correspond to some insertion of complete set of states in this picture. And uh, moreover, there's a Watson uh, condition, which, tests that, uh, which basically says that whenever two particles cross, you have to pay a price by S matrix, a bulk S matrix. And with this general constraints uh, listed, one can then proceed to solve these constraints uh, by applying the bootstrap philosophy. The answer looks like follows. So for simplicity, I'll, rest I'll restrict to the so-called SU2 sector that I mentioned before. That's, that means it determines correlation functions or overlaps between the boundary state and the local operators that are built out of just two scalars, two complex scalars, Z and Y. And uh, the length of this operator, meaning the, the number of letters will be L, and the R charge of this operator will be term determined by the number of Z, which I'll call J. The expressions are particularly simple in the large J limit. Uh, it takes the following form. So the structure, I mean, the position dependence can be fixed. And the interesting thing is this coefficient, the structure constant. The structure constant takes a very in, uh, interesting form. It's a sum over overlaps uh, between this uh, closed string state with some component uh, boundary state. This is very interesting in the sense that from the string theory perspective, the, the boundary states that correspond to the interface defects comes in a SU2 multiplet of size k. And from this, uh, uh, from this uh, uh, bootstrap analysis, one can see that uh, this, uh, this different boundary states in this K multiplet are related by potential bound states between a given boundary state and the particle states. And uh, most of this uh, explicit uh, factors in this expression keep track of the kinematics uh, of this, uh, uh, this uh, rapidities of this Y magnons. The coupling dependence is hidden in the colored factors. So this TK is the so-called uh, flux factor, which has uh, which uh, inherits the sum structure. I, I just want to point out that uh, uh, this this quantity uh, is precisely the Joukowsky uh, coordinates xa uh, that was that also appeared in the, in the localization results. And this is this this is not a surprise, and it's a consistent check. And this is sigma parameter is the so-called uh, dressing phase for the boundary state which we, we determined from the boundary bootstrap. And this sigma tilde is a combination of uh, dressing phase for the bulk two to two S matrix. And this is determined from some previous work from Beth Bysert and uh, others. And this G plus and G minus are the Gauding determinants, which essentially determines the norm of this uh, uh, closed string state. And they, they also can be determined by studying the S uh, by studying the beta equation. And this, uh, I, I should say that this kinematic structure in you know, the dependence on U was recently extended to the full SO6 sector by, the, uh, by, by these authors. Okay. SO6 means that uh, this all operator can be built out of uh, any scalar inside, uh, inside super Yamil sphere. And there are some immediate checks one can do. For example, if you look at zero magna uh, case, which correspond to the ground state on the spin chain, or I mean the BPS uh, uh, closed string state. And that of course matches with the large BPS one point function. And one can also do a weak coupling expansion of this. So everything here is exact in, uh, in the Toft coupling. You can do a weak coupling expansion and that will agree with the spin chain method. And there's some more checks uh, explored in this more recent paper. And to go beyond this expression, I should say this expression are exact in the, in the large J limit and to all others in the one over J expansion. But if you, want to, uh, if you want to go beyond that, consider finite J, you have to take into account the non-perturbity effects in J. And that's the so-called wrapping corrections or illusion corrections. The idea is that this uh, closed string wall sheet has, uh, has a transfer size that's uh, proportional to J. And in the larger limit, the wrapping correction are suppressed. The wrapping correction are coming from virtual particles going around this uh, string. But this wrapping correction can be systematically uh, extracted using the TBA and an analytic continuation method. Let me just summarize. So as I promised, I presented to you a toolkit for studying defects 
uh, in for superamyls. First of all, there's a localization method that allows extraction of general 116 PPS defect networks in, in for superamyls for arbitrary gauge group and arbitrary coupling. There's also a compl complementary method by a bootstrap approach to interability bound integral boundary states that take care of non-PPS uh, correlation functions, but in the strict large limit, large end limit, but otherwise arbitrary to Hoft coupling. And I've illustrated the power of these methods in the context of a particular application to one point function in the intro superamyls in the presence of a half PPS D5 grain interface. So there are a lot more uh, applications and potential, uh, potentially interesting future directions. Let's, let me just comment on uh, several of them. So first of all, this formalism that uh, I discussed can be applied to study correlation functions of both bulk and defect, and bulk operators and defect operators that are restricted to the defect, defect world volume. Some of, some of the localization method was already explored in this earlier paper. We can also upgrade from this uh, topologically more trivial manifold like S4 or R4 to some topologically more interesting manifold like RP4. In that case, the emergent 2D theory would naturally leave some, uh, will naturally leave on RP2, some manifold in RP4, as was uh, discussed in this paper. And we, we also like to study other defects such as surface defects and potentially surface defects are linked, linked with uh, line defects such configuration because of non-trivial topology uh, can, can be, uh, can, can, is sensitive to global structure of the gauge theory and topological couplings. And more generally, we would like to see, we would like to develop a, like a, a explicit map between discrete theta angles in the 4D Amuse theory, as well as uh, topological terms to uh, such quantities in 2D defect Amuse theory. Uh, on the other front, uh, we would like to have some classification of integral boundary states, given how, how powerful it is in this uh, defibre interface context. We would like to have a classification of general integral boundary states in the context of type 2B string theory ADS5 times 5. This will be a complementary approach. Well, in, on the ADS5 times 5, this, is, uh, this, is, this should be a promising approach uh, to study, say, for example, the instant time effects. And also some more exotic uh, uh, defects in superamyose theory, say coming from D7 brain as Charlotte talked about. Uh, slightly related, topological defects uh, or sometimes called bi on world sheet signal models are known to generate a new boundary states starting from a given boundary states in the open string field theory language as explored in these papers. It will be interesting to explore if there's any relation to interface defects in superamyose theory. There have been lots of uh, 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 recent interest in studying TD bar deformations, but mostly in the context of 2D quantum field theories or 2D conform field theories. There has been some uh, uh, recent uh, uh, proposal for a TD bar like deformation in 4D Georgia PMUs, but very little is known about the physical nature of this deformation, such as incodability. Fortunately, thanks to this 2D 4D map, which I've reviewed, we can relate such a TD bar deformation to the amuse theory. And it turns out that the amuse theory does, has a, does have a solvable TD bar deformation explored in this paper. And it will be interesting to study the consequence of this uh, in, in light of the 2D 4D relation for the 4D enforcer PMOs under TD bar deformation. And of course, it will be interesting to study SL2C properties of this general defect observables. There have been uh, a lot of recent progress in understanding. SL2Z properties of correlation functions of local operators where uh, uh, non-trivial modular invariance can be obtained by studying this uh, four-point function in the larger limit. Including defects will definitely reach the story and this will be something worth exploring. And finally, it will be interesting to extend this defect analysis to other ADS-CFT pairs. In particular, in the context of ADS-3 CFT correspondence as was explained in Rajesh's talk. Beyond deriving ADS-CFT, so ADS-3 CFT to beyond, beyond the level of local operators, uh, we would like to include also defects. And because in this context, the 2D CFT technology can be applied both at the space-time and world sheet uh, level, it holds the promise of actually deriving this uh, uh, in, the, in the presence of defect insertions on the, on the field theory side. 
So there are many more applications uh, I'll be happy to discuss uh, after the talk. But let me end here. Uh, thank you and invite questions. Okay, let's unmute ourselves for a few seconds to thank Jifan uh, for the very nice talk. And questions. There was some question by Juan Martin Maldacena in the in the chat. We want uh, to ask a question. Easy chat. I was just simply asking how you determine the normalization, but I, I see that Shota was uh, gave me an answer. That, ah, okay, the normalization of the one-point functions. Yeah, the overall normalization of uh, the boundary state. Right. Yeah, that's that's essentially related to this uh, insertion in the matrix model. So it's normalized by the two-point function. Any questions? Any other questions? Yeah, she. she uh, hi, Ivan. Yes. Uh, so, uh, does the localization result uh, shed light on um, the integrability beyond the leading large n limit? Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, well, I mean, we haven't really studied the one over correction to the localization results, I would say potentially, but generally it's very, as you know, the going beyond the planar limit is very difficult. I mean, Shota and uh, Jua has some work on that by including more handles. But uh, yeah, I don't, yeah, but uh, because here you can potentially have many explicit that's right. formula, maybe. That's yeah. right. Yes, like, I, I, I think definitely that's something worth exploring. Yes. And we then. So the one sixteenth BPS Wilson operators that you consider, what sort of loops? on S4 can, can they live on? Right, so so it can live anywhere. Uh, so let me give you the picture. So this is the S2. The Boston loop can live anywhere on the S2. It, they, they can intersect, it can be arbitrary contour. Anywhere, but only on the S2. That's right, that's right. To preserve the Q. Well, uh, so that's a large class, but there are also another class of Wilson loops that uh, preserve the semi supercharge that locates on the circle that links with S2. But I did not discuss it here. Thank you. You can find it in my original paper. Any other question? So, sorry, can I ask you a question, please? Yes, go ahead, please. So, um, so how about uh, uh, descent of operators? So, do you actually do any operator in the different CP5 uh, setup? Sorry, what, what about what operator? I missed the first. Descent of so, we, we usually uh, study uh, beta states. Uh -huh. uh, uh, so, uh, overlaps of beta states, but. Uh, do you actually uh, consider any beta states of, uh, of n equals four superior means or just uh, specific, the specific states that you just showed us? Oh, so, so the, the explicit analysis that I presented is restricted to the so-called SU2 sector. Right. Yeah. But this analysis, the kinematics dependence on the rapidities was extended, uh, I guess, by a paper that appeared two days ago to the full SO6 sector. I don't know. I don't know about the, for example, SU two slash three. I mean, those things can be definitely worked out, but we didn't do it in our, in our paper. But oh, yeah, right. I, I think it's it's a simple exercise to work it out. What's right. what's harder will be this uh, wrapping corrections, namely number of corrections in J. That requires more work. All right. Thanks. Yeah. Any other questions? How how do boundary or interface local operators work in the in integrability? That's a very good question. Uh, so this is some something a work in progress with Shota. Uh, so I would suspect they correspond to some open string excitations. Um, we only have some localization results so far, so uh, I don't have anything concrete to say on the integrability side at the moment. Malatena, you have another question. Another observable in this defect operators is the two-point function of the displacement operator. Is very, good question. Uh, very good question. Uh, I, I haven't checked it very carefully, but I believe the displacement operator itself is not in the, in the Q cohomology. 
but it can be related to some other observables that do leak in the Q homology. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? No. Well, if not, let's thank Yifan again. And we have a little break and we resume at 6, uh, 6 p.m. South African.